Summer isn't completely full of dinosaurs and superheroes after all. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movies you missed this summer. Not enough. Stop! Don't shoot, don't shoot! <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at movies that were released to theaters between June and August 2018 that received big-time critical acclaim, but which were largely ignored by the general movie-going public. Let's just do our thing. What thing? We've never done this before. Number 10. The Miseducation of Cameron Post The story of a gay teen who's sent to a religious conversion camp in an attempt to cure her of her sexuality is based on the 2012 novel of the same name by Emily M. Danforth. When you are at an age where you are especially vulnerable to evil, Change will come through God. It stars the brilliant Chloe Grace Moretz in the title role, and was originally screened at Sundance back in January, where it won the festival's prestigious Grand Jury Prize. You're facing the consequences of your actions, and it's ugly. Its box office take is very underwhelming. Despite its lack of a paying audience, it's a movie that deserves to be seen, not only for its well-told story, 90s nostalgia, and wit, but also for its beautiful and timely themes on bravery, optimism, and acceptance. I'm tired of feeling disgusted with myself. You have no idea what you're doing, dude. Number 9. Leave No Trace You know those films that catapult young actors into the spotlight? Leave No Trace will do that for Thomas and Mackenzie. Like Cameron Post, Leave No Trace debuted at Sundance before receiving a limited release to theaters in the summer. Who taught you how to read? My dad teaches me. You're actually quite a bit ahead of where you need to be. It tells the story of an Iraq veteran suffering from PTSD who attempts to maintain his rural hermetic existence with his young teen daughter. Was your dad in the service? He was. Do you feel safe living with your dad? We didn't need to be rescued. Both Ben Foster and Thomas and McKenzie are mesmerizing in the lead roles, with the latter receiving immense amounts of praise. The film currently sits at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes with 185 reviews, making it one of the best-reviewed movies on the site. Come award season, this one might be gobbling them up. I think it might be easier on us if we try to attack. We're wearing their clothes, we're in their house, we're eating their food, we're doing their work. We have adapted. Number 8. Don't worry, he won't get far on foot. Hi, my name is John and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, John. Gus Van Zandt's biopic tells the real story of John Callahan, an alcoholic, quadriplegic, award-winning cartoonist in the Pacific Northwest who channeled his frustrations and unique sense of black humor to draw brilliantly provocative and edgy newspaper cartoons. The amazing cast includes megastars Joaquin Phoenix, Jonah Hill, Rooney Mara, and Jack Black. And the film deftly balances moments of sweetness, pathos, and incredibly funny yet incredibly dark humor. You draw this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Do you get awesome. it? Dude. Yeah. 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 Dude. Don't worry, boys. He won't get far on foot. It may not be for everyone, especially considering its difficult subject matter and divisive sense of humor. But for those who do enjoy a good dark comedy, this movie is a must-see. Well, it's just a cartoon. I mean, it's just supposed to be funny. Number 7. Searching Yet another movie that debuted at Sundance, this thriller follows a man desperately attempting to find his missing 16-year-old daughter. And it's told entirely through computer and phone screens. I'm calling to report a missing person. Okay, who is this regarding? My daughter. You may be wary of the cinematic approach, but Searching is arguably the first movie to use it and come up with legitimately thrilling inventive results. None of this would be doable without a committed actor, and the versatile cult favorite John Cho is up to the challenge, crafting a believable and relatable character. My daughter is in a lesson with you right now. Margot canceled her classes six months ago. And three. She's been transferring funds for the last six months. We wouldn't quite call it the future of movies, but searching proves that you can indeed craft a great movie out of this style of filmmaking. I know my daughter. I'm trying to help you find my daughter. <laughs> I didn't know her. I didn't know my daughter. Number 6. Won't You Be My Neighbor? Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood is one of the most iconic children's TV programs of all time, and Fred Rogers one of the most widely beloved TV stars. I give an expression of care every day to each child. This documentary honors his life, work, and legacy, and then some. It paints a picture of a beloved and radical yet complex man. It isn't afraid to highlight Rogers' imperfections, 
and it's all the more honest and therefore stronger for it. Oh, uh, hello there. <laughs> hello, everybody. It also beautifully highlights what made Rogers such an incredible human being and influential figure for generations of children and adults alike. This is required viewing for everyone, whether you watched Rogers or not. Oh, and make sure you have a box of tissues. You're gonna need it. When I was a boy and I would hear about something scary, my mother would tell us, always look for the people who are helping. You'll always find somebody who's trying to help. Number five, blind spotting. This was a movie nearly 10 years in the making. Screenwriters Raphael Casal and David Diggs of Hamilton fame began writing the movie nine years ago, before the longtime friend schedules finally allowed them to complete it in 2017. Do me a favor. I got three days left on this probation. When you got that gun on you, just don't tell me about it. The movie blurs the line between realism and comic absurdity by detailing many facets of modern African-American life and culture in Oakland, California, through the eyes of a parolee who witnesses a police shooting. <laughs> It wades into topical themes like gentrification and police brutality, while deftly balancing hard-hitting drama, social commentary, and light-hearted buddy comedy. And it succeeds on many, many levels. Every time you come around, you monsters got me feeling like a monster in my own town. Ah! Number four, Three Identical Strangers. Another remarkable documentary makes our list. This one about three identical triplets who were separated at birth and adopted by families of differing economic levels. One working class, one middle class, and one upper class. All of us just sat back and watched three separate lives becoming one. The doc details how the children were raised and then subsequently discovered each other by happenstance when they were 19. It's an intense exploration of identity and the effects that upbringing and culture have on individuals. And then the story takes a turn and things get even more bizarre and unbelievable. It's a real story that truly is stranger than fiction. They liked the same things and they had similar interests, but deep down, they were different. Number three, Black Klansman. This is arguably the most popular and mainstream movie on this list. It's directed by the renowned Spike Lee and was released in over 1,500 theaters. That said, it didn't receive the attention we believe it deserved. What can I do you for? Well, since you asked, I hate blacks. I hate Jews, Mexicans, and Irish. The film tells the true story of Ron Stallworth, a black police officer who infiltrated the KKK in Colorado in the 1970s. You asked too many questions. You're undercover or something? It's obviously a very topical film, as its release date coinciding with the one-year anniversary of the Charlottesville rally can attest. However, it's not just a political movie. It's legitimately both hilarious and thrilling, contains great performances, and is filled with relevant observations about deep-rooted societal issues. Spike Lee is back. Black power! Black power! Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. That's us, Stallworth brothers. Number two. Eighth grade. Oh, how far Bo Burnham has come. The teen who once uploaded songs to YouTube has now created one of the most acclaimed movies of 2018. Gucci. Eighth grade was both written and directed by Burnham, and it explores a 13-year-old girl's final week of middle school. The underlying coming-of-age story and deep dive into school social life may be nothing new, but it's told with incredible sincerity and rawness, and its observations on mental health, confidence, and anxiety are utterly topical. Don't be weird and quiet, because, like, I look over at you and I think you're about to drive us into a tree or something, and then I get really freaked out, and then I can't text my friends. So just, like, be quiet and drive, and don't look weird and sad. Kids today are growing up in an age of overwhelming social media that no previous generation ever experienced, and eighth grade honestly looks at the effects this has on adolescents. You deserve someone who can go through tough times and make themselves feel better with their advice and actually do the stuff they talk about. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. You guys, this is my band. This is my band! Okay, so what do we do now? I mean, we could write another song. I had this dream that I wanted to tell you about. I dreamt I slammed my mother's hand with an iron. I felt like I was underwater, watching her. You know what they say about dreaming. The darkness, creative genius. 
Nobody could create emotions like McQueen. Number one, sorry to bother you. Let's be serious here. Anything Lakeith Stanfield touches turns to gold. Here, he plays Cassius Cash Green, a black telemarketer who puts on a stereotypical white voice to help his career. As always, we'll be getting that out to you right away. You're doing so good with the voice thing. Holla, 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 holla. As he climbs the corporate ladder and tastes success and wealth, his radical friends and co-workers protest that corporate culture. It was written and directed by first-timer Boots Riley, although he helms the screen here like a veteran. I got promoted. I'm a power caller. What did I sell? They're not selling yeah. it, but we sell it. No, well, there's no amount of money that make me do that. The movie is filled with fantastic performances and a highly surreal, ambitious filmmaking style that guarantees its place as one of 2018's most unique and original films. If this movie's any indication, Boots Riley will soon be one of Hollywood's most acclaimed creative minds. You are awesome. Oh yeah! All right! Some for the homies and some for me! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.